became what it was. We met in theater, and then when we started playing music together during a show, um, when that show ended, we were living in San Francisco, more or less, mm -hmm. and more or less living. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, yeah, that hasn't changed. No, you know, it was kind of just something we were doing somewhat on the side for a while, and it was fun, and we were working on original music too, and. Uh, slowly it became kind of our main focus and mm -hmm. we still do theater but like music is what what we do that's our main thing and the bizarre cafe is like the first place that we ever played mm -hmm. well we lived around the corner mm -hmm. and i used to work there i don't know if you remember i did that. not know that. i used to work there that's one of my Not many jobs in uh -huh. san francisco when we lived there and when sam and i first started playing together i was like oh you should come to my neighborhood you know there's this open mic at this place called Bazaar and it's like only originals and like he had all these originals that I loved and so I was like you know you should come and sing and so he came into town for the night and I think we'd worked up one song with me singing yeah. harmony mm -hmm. and Les one of the owners came up to us and was like I'd like to book you for a show when, when can you do a show and we were like we only know one song <laughs> maybe we could do it in like a couple of months so that was the impetus for us learning more together and sort of like, you know, we were enjoying it already, but you know, the Bizarre Cafe was like a, an instigator for sure. It was yeah. a nice little place to, to cut our teeth kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so you both were playing for most of your life to that point. Yeah. But you were both writing songs or were you mainly writing the originals at the time? Or were yeah. You... I'd been playing guitar for 10 or 15 years. Mm -hmm. And I'd been writing songs, but I hadn't been like pursuing it mm -hmm. as my main thing. So I had a batch of songs that we had to, yeah. like, oh, here we go. Uh -huh. And then, you know, a lot of our early work together was songs that mm -hmm. we were coming up with together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, he um, gave me a demo, a CD. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back in 2004 or whatever it was. <laughs> and I heard these songs, and I may have heard, like, one or two, because we knew each other before then, mm -hmm. but we hadn't really, like, spent a lot of time together. And then he left this demo for me on my dressing table because we were in a show together mm -hmm. and I listened to it and I was I was just singing along I mean most of it was just sort of naturally me wanting to like just join in and you know <laughs> sing harmonies with something that sounded like it wanted harmony you know and so that was kind of the first way in for me and I really enjoyed it and then you know that's kind of how we got going. Yeah. 
stop in to every church in town. Peeked in through the stained glass window, tried to find the one God hung around. Across the sky, the banks of Lake Ontario, silver green reflecting in our eyes. Made our pledge right there on the shore. Swore we'd never let them win. Stars came stealing down over our heads. Musicians who acted. I sort of considered myself an actor who played music sometimes uh -huh. at the beginning. Uh -huh. Because I went to music school in undergrad uh -huh. in Eugene in Oregon, and I got kind of burned out on it. I mean, if you go to music school, it's pretty intense. You uh -huh. know, it's very much a conservatory atmosphere uh -huh. there at the school I went to. And I studied voice and I studied bass and all this stuff. And so I was sort of like shedding all that. And I didn't want to pursue that anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I was really 100% I'm an actor. Mm -hmm. And theater, you know. Yeah. Musical yeah. theater or not No, necessarily? oddly enough, no. I mean, I, I've done some musicals, but generally, no. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, it was non-musical stuff that I was doing. And same with Sam. And yeah. yeah, meeting up. And I don't know. I just kind of re discovered how much I loved music mm -hmm. in a different setting. Right. Like the creative uh, side of it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I got it in for the business. Or, or, just, or just like the rigor yeah. yeah. studies different things. Yeah. The discipline oh, totally. was like, Expression. I had the discipline. Yeah. yeah. I needed to find the heart again, kind of. And that was like really nice. Sam's music really gave that to me. You mm -hmm. know, and I was like, oh, this is why I love singing and mm -hmm. this is why I love playing. 
and how about your trajectory? So you had written songs, you were playing music, and yeah. then acting was kind of equal, or? I, um, I think I was mainly focused on acting. I went to school uh, down in Santa Cruz, studying to be an uh -huh. actor, and went right into some professional stuff right out of school. Oh, cool. And so I was just kind of on that path, uh -huh. and I'd, I'd played guitar since high school, and uh -huh. had started writing songs in my late years in uh -huh. college, and then in my 20s. and but. Um, I was just focused more on, on theater uh -huh. stuff, and I really became more serious when we started playing together, starting playing gigs where I felt a little more brave just doing original stuff at that point. It was also just, you know, I was getting to an age where I felt like, no, I, I have something to say, and uh -huh. I'm enjoying doing, you know, other than just covers, which I love doing still, uh -huh. but... And then actually uh, having a partner in it, and, you know, when suddenly you're bouncing ideas off, uh -huh. and you're able to do more than just, you know, with my two hands and my voice, <laughs> um, we could actually, you know, make more than the sum of its parts. Mm -hmm. And that was, yeah, it was really exciting to be able to have that mm -hmm. new avenue. But we were still balancing theater, which, you know, you have to devote so much time ahead of time and planning and booking. The production you met in, was it a musical theater? Or yes, I mean, in that, that it, it was a show about Woody Guthrie, right, yeah, cool. so not your typical musical theater. Uh -huh. It was not Guys and Dolls. Right. Uh -huh. And we'd met before at we, a Shakespeare yeah. Festival in Berkeley, and so oh, okay. we knew each other. And then we got cast in this Woody Guthrie play together, just accidentally. Mm -hmm. And the show itself, it's definitely worth seeing. In fact, we actually did a cast recording with the cast at the Freight and Salvage. Uh -huh. So that was really nice to be able to do that. It was kind of an amazing experience. But like that show gave us the sort of like backdrop to kind of like experiment with our own stuff yeah yeah and kind of gave us the inspiration and the confidence to do it too i think yeah. and we were in our 20s you know like we were just like anything's possible right. we do what we want to do we do what feels right and i mean i think in some ways we still live that way but at that time it just seemed like let's just explore this and mm -hmm. see what happens mm -hmm. you know because we just didn't know mm -hmm. uh, where it would take us and there's also a, a lot of it still but at that time, I think when we started going more focused on music, there was a number of reasons, but part of it was just creative control and being able to go, you know what, I love theater, and we both do, but there's so many elements that have to happen before you actually get to act. I mean, you have to be cast. You're music, directed. You're directed. Yeah, yeah. You're linked to, hopefully the play is a good one that you like. And all of that, mm -hmm. all those elements that need to come together. And with the music, we were able to go, oh, look, we don't have a job right now. Let's work on this new music. And we can get a gig at least easier than an acting gig. Mm -hmm. And there we were doing our own music and still performing, still telling stories, which, you know, is, I think, what got us into both Absolutely, arts. Yeah. You're still acting though, right? Were you just in something? I just wrote music to lyrics that Shakespeare had written for a play called As You Like It. Oh, neat. And this play was out in Colorado in Boulder. The director was setting it roughly in the 50s, 60s America, mm -hmm. so wanted sort of a rootsy Americana, folky, kind of mm -hmm. all that. It was a cool exercise in writing, you know, trying to make Shakespeare's lyrics which were written as songs back in the day, right. but we were updating the music. So that was a really cool, different thing that I've done. We've done it together on a couple plays. Yeah, one Grapes of these, and Wrath was yeah. one that I really enjoyed doing. That was Obviously really fun. Right. This was an adaptation text. of Grapes of Wrath that was a famous production that was done in Chicago mm -hmm. in I think the At Steppenwolf, 70s right? or 80s. So it was a famous production mm -hmm. that incorporated a band with music. Okay. And, but this production wanted to use some of those lyrics that John Steinbeck had included mm -hmm. as sort of, not prose, but sort of elevated language in the right. book and made into songs. Uh -huh. And we were tasked with, you know, coming up with music to those lyrics and then some transition stuff. Yeah. I think it, we enjoy playing off the two disciplines just because, like Sam said, like we're passionate storytellers. We want to connect with our audience. like. Our favorite thing is to be in a in a conversation with the audience, you know, whether we're doing a play or music. And so we feel like both of those mediums are really immediate and you can and you can really you can touch people, you can really communicate with people with both, both those mediums. So you're saying music's the main thing 
are you auditioning for plays? We're not as right. much as we were. I yeah. Think. I, I think we're choosing the timing more carefully mm-hmm. because right now we're working on a lot of new music and we're in the studio a lot working on this new album we're doing. And so, oh, you started recording it. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it just takes so much creative focus. You know. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. project. Yeah. yeah. And it's logistics, too. Yeah. So uh, that's what we're focusing on. I think we're just more choosy about how we expend our energy and our time. Yeah. Because you just you can't do everything. Mm, right? I know. Yeah. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you very much. So tell me about the new project. I was reviewing your catalog a little bit, and I was like, oh yeah, they haven't done an original album yeah. in five years. It's since yeah. 2013. Yeah. Oh, a little more. Yeah. And then you did the album of covers. Yeah. Oh. So you probably have quite a number of songs to choose from then. We do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we've been playing them yeah. out for a while now, which uh -huh. has been great to have them incubate like that. Uh -huh. It's going to be a mix of stuff that we haven't played out a lot uh -huh. and that we will then be recording and then ones that feel funny almost saying, this is a new song because right. we've actually been playing it for a while, right. but it has been fun to have both of those elements where we're revisiting a song in a studio context and then others that we're kind of discovering. As you're writing your ball, you're, you're both writing. I take it, I'm or? not writing as much. I think on this next album, I've been trying to push myself to do a little more creative work in terms of coming up with the kernels of ideas that help us create the song. Sam is our main songwriter. That's mm -hmm. just kind of how it is. That's what I love about the music we play. And I know it's weird to talk about, like, I love the music no, we play, but I, but I, mean, I do. It's a collaborative <laughs> You have to love it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's true. Oh, I can't stand uh, this music. Yeah. <laughs> I know, but I think part of the great part of what Sam does in terms of coming up with the main, you know, part of the songwriting, he creates the lyrics, he creates the chord structure, and then we both go in to the song and we talk a lot about the structure, we talk a lot about the arrangement, um, the harmonies get added, the bass part gets added, a lot of times that will inform the song and sort of like take it different places. Mm -hmm. The songs often sound very different after that process. Mm -hmm. It's so funny in terms of like, we've talked a lot about ownership of, of the songs, like mm -hmm. in terms of like, well, you know, you're the songwriter, but I also influence the creative process of finishing the songs. To me, it's, yeah. I mean, she is hesitant to give herself credit as, as if, like, we just add the harmony. <laughs> like, I mean, that's like saying we just add the bass and the whole, the rest of the whole song. Like, and yeah, just <laughs> throw, throw in some music, <laughs> put a little music, <laughs> and it's all ready to go. But, like, Megan's voice for harmony is such a deep part of what we do. Mm -hmm. And to me, as I was writing for just me playing with my guitar 16 years ago, mm -hmm. how it's developed working together. And I don't inform a lot of what I like. The harmony needs to be there at all. Mm -hmm. Megan's just got such a great impulse and instinct on harmonies. What's going on? Oh, oh geez. <laughs> Dodging an enormous board. Wow. Oh, wow. It's okay, everyone. Looks like a lot of birds have just been like cruising on that. It's been a wrap. <laughs> I know. One like just on there. I know. I'm like, what? Floater. Floater. It's like super float. Um, Floater starboard side. I do think that Sam's songwriting is it's my favorite. You know, like I love that his ideas are so unique and original. His lyrics are poetical, you know? They're not just stories, they're also like his beautiful images. And like I think of Mary Oliver's poems a lot when I think of Sam's music in terms of his lyric stuff but yeah if I hear something I don't really like or if I don't get it or something I'll be like well what is that what does that mean and, you know, and I, you know I think it's a safe position to be in for me because I'm sort of like I'm not the one creating the lyrics but I also, I also a good am question, bouncing off it, you are the one that's going to be representing it too so if you can't yeah. get behind it completely yeah. you'll yeah. kind of be at least neutrally it's gonna right be yeah and I mean that doesn't happen <laughs> a ton because I mean a lot of people work on a, a group of songs like I'm gonna write 15 songs songs for this album mm -hmm. and choose 10 or I'm gonna write 30 songs for this album and choose 12 whatever that's not really our process mm -hmm. like our process is more like the song finds us mm. and we work on it until it's right mm -hmm. and that usually means taking it out to people and seeing how it hits them and we learn so much by live performance and yeah. all of our music and then um, once we've done that for a long time we get it in the studio and we really hear it you know because when you're in the studio as you know it's like you hear it back and it's like oh you know you learn so much because it doesn't lie you know it really it shows you a mirror basically of what you're doing and then once that process is through then it goes back out in front of people and then once that whole process is through I think then it's like done kind mm -hmm. of you know I mean it's never done right but but I think eventually at that once we have it to that point point in the process it feels more done to mm -hmm. us.
collection of songs yeah. representing over a certain amount of years, yeah. crazy yeah. times in the yeah. world, yeah. you're pretty aware, and then you're also seasoned recording artists, performing artists, where are you going to do it? We're working the same place that we recorded the last two albums actually. Or is that, is that um, here? It's down in the South Bay in okay. Niles, which oh, is part Niles. of Fremont. So it's a studio run by a guy named Bruce Kappen. He amazing. worked yeah. our last two albums. Mm -hmm. um, we met him through Jeff Kayser, who was Cricket uh, Jades. Jades. Okay. And Jeff produced our last two albums ago and introduced us to Bruce. Mm -hmm. And we just had such a great time working there. It's a fairly small studio, mm -hmm. but he is a master and has been doing it for 40 some odd 40 years. plus oh, yeah. years. He's all, a good hand. Down in yeah. LA, up here, yeah. all over the place. Yeah. And above all that, we just connected. Yeah. And, yeah. and become you know, close. The with trust him, yeah. in in the studio. Are you recording with doing? the band? Are you doing song by song? Song or? by song. Yeah. This mix of songs is it's eclectic in the sense that there's definitely some songs that we feel there's drums and a bigger sound, a band sound. And then there's still ballads that are quiet, maybe just a guitar and two voices or something mm -hmm. very minimal. And that's what I think is really exciting is each song is going to be its own thing. We want to put it on vinyl this time. We got Seven Hour Storm on vinyl. I, it's just been nice to have that. Mm -hmm. It's just a different experience. Mm -hmm. 
are you aiming for a date? We're aiming for fall, like okay. September. September yeah. is kind of what we're aiming for. And, you know, in gearing up to start again, and we're always like, oh my God, it's not just the recording. I mean, as anyone who's an independent artist knows, like you see that CD when you get it done and everyone thinks, oh, wow, you went in the studio and you recorded yeah. now. It's like, all the trips it's to the all studio. trips it's to the, the studio the and, and, yep. and the, the decision yeah. making the focused decision making is just on like, all elements yeah yeah it's so intense the mixing yeah. the mixing the, and yeah. then the like, vocal takes yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah and the yeah. arrangements like I, do i like this part do i want it to be different that train sounds like home like we have a train that goes oh, yeah. by our house at home yeah <laughs>
Thank you. This is the driftiest drift <laughs> drifty sale we've, uh, we've ever done for this production. It is very pleasant. Okay. Yeah, yeah, like, no, this is great. Yeah. Because we've like barely gone anywhere. I'm like, wait, Kwame's just gone. <laughs> we're basically drifting with the tide right yeah. now. Yeah. It's better than the wind. Okay. Another piece of we're console. drifting. That's what I've, we've been doing for 16 years. Right. <laughs> it's very, like, the non-glam video. Yeah, we're definitely non-glam today. But <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have funny ads, so that's yeah. always good. Was off the pond in the dust When the birds who made a fuss At the truck stop outside Vakov Rinse the bumper of its insects Tail light and its slight defect Memory of a saloon near Cloverdale Clean up, start again Put your feet up, my friend Soon enough we'll be up, we'll be gone Clean up, start again Who knows where, when We'll be up, we'll be on Suck up the crumbs of those cookies you didn't make. Packed up and eaten in the car. Souvenirs of time spent playing at the Bazaar Cafe. Clean up, start again. Put your feet on my bed soon enough. We'll be up, we'll be gone. Clean up, start again.